Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, mm. Stan Lab. All right, we're just going to come in with the... I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, we've been gone for two weeks. And the reason because we had to get out of the country for yeah, a little bit. Yeah, we had to do a vacay, vacay, vacay. Yes, yeah, so yeah. if you all are not following us on social media, that means Instagram specifically. Make sure y'all doing that. But also follow us on um, our lifestyle channel, which is Life With Us TV. Indeed. On YouTube and on Instagram because we have been plugging different Insta stories showing you all some of the good time that we've had. I know the elephant in the room is what the fuck happened to your thumb. That will be in the blog. Yeah, that will be in the blog. Um, yep. We'll talk about it. Just know that my shirt says, but did you die? That was the theme of vacation. A lot of shit happened. It was a fun got doing time. We had a sick night. Yeah. But I didn't die. I just came out with something going on my throat. I still... <laughs> <laughs> but any hoodles, thank Ooh. you all. Thank you, thank you for the birthday wishes, the cash apps, um, the yeah. DMs. I greatly appreciate it. It is the only time of year we accept anything monetarily on this channel. So when you all do it and come through, we greatly yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and get into... No, we're going to plug in the fact that our vacation vlogs are going to start loading tomorrow, tomorrow. on our lifestyle channel. Yep. So if tomorrow you're interested... Evening. Yep, if you're interested in those, go ahead and make sure you subscribe to Life With Us TV. We'll link it down below. Y'all will get to see all of it. It was a good guy doing time. Yeah. We'll just go ahead and give you a little nugget. We visited two countries, mm -hmm. one city, no, two cities, two cities, one state. Yeah. Boom. That's all we're going to get y'all. Yeah. So, Love and Marriage Huntsville, we're going to start off on this week's episode, but we're going to reference a lot of what happened two episodes ago because it's going to make things make sense. But Martell signs. So, going backwards, why Tiffany trying to sit there and act like she didn't know what she was doing at that day on brunch? Like, seriously, sis. Now, unless editing was very strategic, which editing can, can be, strategic, be strategic, yeah. but at the same time, there is only so much that you can do with editing if what you said came out your mouth. Right. And we're going to get into how Maurice dealt with it, and I really appreciated how he dealt with it. But let's go ahead and let's talk about Tisha and Marceau real quick. Marceau, boy, he knows how to buzz kill tisha comes to the door when he's coming through the hotel room in houston she read it just i mean really she ready to give it up she they really oh, didn't even read. have they ain't had to go to the she, dinner or nothing she, she, she drinking chocolate champagne the black champagne oh, i don't yeah. think that was the black champagne, the black well, we, champagne we just gonna say it is <laughs> um, and he's just talking about business just business just business i was like you know what all them juices said said she dried up she dried right up <laughs> And she took him to a surprise therapy visit. I oh, didn't even know that you could do that. Like, could can you surprise somebody with a therapy session? I mean, you can. You could be like, hey, meet me at such and such and such and give me the address. And, I'll, you know, me, I'll be there. But he should all have seen the sign on the door that said family canceling. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's definitely a part of the show without being a part of the show. But I'm like, how do you? So Did you even do that? Though? I don't think he was like totally surprised. But um, we saw our man, Dr. Francis, which we love Dr. Francis. And although Marceau was trying to act like he wasn't hearing what Tisha was saying and what um, Dr. Francis was saying, he got what he was saying is oh, that yeah. in your marriage, you have to prioritize those things that are near and dear to you or those things will go away eventually. Yeah. And that kind of is why I'm talking about the last episodes because that has been a growing theme mm -hmm. right now. We saw Kimmy and Maurice, which is my favorite couple and I never want anything to happen to them. But Kimmy laid it all out with evidence that Maurice is so imbalanced that she's gotten used to and accepted the fact that he's so imbalanced in their marriage. They still have not gone on a honeymoon. Mm -hmm. There are still some things when it comes to this um to monster that Kimmy seems like she's just on an island to herself and she says, I I accept that I only get to know things on a need to know basis. That's not good. Right. And we were talking about that most of the time 
the more successful you become, yeah. the more, more pre the pressure, pressure of the family yeah, and the more yeah. you sacrifice the and family relationships. Yeah. to keep that level of success. And we're right. sitting here like, we not, we're, we're not them. We're okay. But we never want to get to a point where this don't work. This this is this is not this working is, because yeah. we trying to be successful out there. Yeah, and you're in the time that we have together is mm -hmm. now being traded for <clears throat> dollars. Right. Granted, that has to happen sometimes, but right. it still needs to be within reason, within balance. So Tisha and Marceau are having that issue as well, but they've had this issue for a very long time. And it's kind of the position that they both signed up for. But it still has to be balanced within the boundaries of what they signed up for. Like Letitia was saying, my position has always been I'm at the house. He's out making the money. Mm -hmm. But his position is the more I see money going out of the household, the, the more, more I have, have to, to stay out the household to replace, that to money. replace the money. And what Tisha was saying was, yes, I do spend a significant amount of money, but you're acting like I'm spending it all on myself. I'm taking care of the everything, everything of the household. household. So your expenses a month personally <laughs> may be a thousand and mine might be four to five thousand. That's because there's more people that I am fending for with this pool of money than you just pulling from the money for yourself. So I was like, dang. And then we thought about the Holtz and how more successful they, they became got, was, and the yeah. more like this they became yep. so i'm sitting here like all right kim and maurice i'm gonna need y'all to pull it together because yeah because I, I yeah i don't yeah i don't want nothing to happen to y'all nah and because maurice i love me some maurice but he was being a hoe <laughs> how, how how maurice how we get here we need to talk we need to talk how you da, 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 da. I, because like the more the more like when it comes down to that balance thing i i know one thing we've talked about that for years and years and years and years so i'm i'm starting to kind of think that maybe balance is sort of a myth because in life mm. in, in, in life let's let's i mean we be real not everything in your life is popping at once right. so it could be your business is popping now and your relationship is popping now or uh your friendship with some new friends is popping now. So whatever is popping, your attention has to go there. So I think what has to happen is what Dr. Francis was talking about, which I know you're going to get there. I know it's not about Kimmy and them, but it's pri prioritizing your relationships, prioritizing your business. So everything right. has a spot that nothing is left neglected. Because I can remember one time that we was just like hustling, 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 doing our thing, we like, helping people. And I, and I wouldn't necessarily say we was going like this, but I, but I would just say that we realized like, hey, when the last time we had a date night, you know, when the last time we had a vacation, when the last time right. we did this together, so we start to forget about what brought us together or because what you take for granted that right. it's okay. Yeah, you here, good. And yeah, right. you good, and right. yeah, but you know, if you ain't putting no energy into something, eventually it's gonna die. Sure is. So it's that's why I think the prioritize come like okay, okay, this amount of time this week I'm gonna put some energy to my relationship mm -hmm. and I'm gonna put some energy in my business on this side. But yeah, I don't I think balance is is a myth that something you chase that you never gonna find. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I maybe the word is imbalance. Maybe it's perspective places. I like that too. So like <clears throat> even when Marcel did it, when he told Siri to remind him of date night. I cringe. And Dr. <laughs> Francis said, mm -mm -mm. I don't never have to ask Siri to tell me when something is important. Yeah. That's something that's already in me and I know it to do. And I'm like, yeah. But at the same time, you don't want to despise people's steps towards correcting that. Imperfect action. Because if he's a person that lives his life by a calendar like I do, right. it seemed imperson impersonable. But at the same time, that may be his way of making sure it isn't grafted yeah. into his memory. Because that that's what done. I have to do. Yeah, that it gets that it gets done. Yeah, because if I don't have a calendar, I told one of my girlfriends one day, I was like, honey, put it on my calendar, like yeah. link it in, because I if mean, not, I, I won't know it. I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, this is the truth. That, and we, it goes beyond relationships. Whatever is, is not planned does not happen. It doesn't. Real fast. If you just live life, you know, by by the seat of your pants and whatever happens, happens. I'm telling you, things gonna happen that you don't wanna happen. But you have to make plans. Right. Like like our vacation, it just it just happened for y'all, 
But we planned this like in the beginning of the year. We was like, we're gonna be traveling this year. We didn't think about COVID. We didn't think about getting sick. We just knew that we gonna be traveling this year. If we didn't plan it, it would never happen. Yeah. Now this one we just did. It kind of wasn't, but yes. Now what I'm saying, what I'm yeah, saying, plan. We plan towards. Yeah, it. like it's not. It wasn't specific that I'm gonna do this, this, and this. Yeah. If the specific plan was, we are gonna travel at least three or four times this year. Yeah, and we have and, a monthly budget that we put right. aside for vacationing right, every so, month. So the money is always there. So when we see something we want to do, the money is there. Yeah, to and that, do yeah, it. exactly. So, so but we treat we, it like a bill. Yeah. So if it wasn't planned, it would never happen. Real facts. Yeah. But back to the story at hand, <laughs> it was so good to see Kiowa and Kiowa in a different light. Like Kiowa is more soft. She's more open. She, they are more of a team now. Like there isn't any of this, but I'm going to tell you what uh, I, I think her, I, think, I think her, the man in her life is balancing her out. He been there. Because I mean, we didn't know a lot about him, but this episode just hearing him, you know, talk and stuff with his conversations yeah i think i think he has a, a piece in it helping with that we'll give him that we don't yeah. know but, but I, um, yeah <laughs> maurice pissed me off when it came to okay kyle wanted to ha come into town and have a conversation with them and just have like a little sit down chit chat meeting other minds about monster i thought that was a great idea maurice had a meeting to go through go to after said meeting was supposed to occur mm -hmm. but it happened that kiowa and her husband ended up coming late they said that their flight, flight came in late, late. yeah oh do we know oh, about we that we know about that listen <laughs> american allies dropped us off <laughs> and they forgot to pick us up yeah Hold like, another story for another yeah, day it's like three four hours later <laughs> they, they finally came and picked us up. How you have your flight attendants sitting on the plane waiting and we all had no And bodies. the pilots ain't there. That they got to fly in from Miami. And Richmond. And Richmond. To get us to back, fly us to, back to, to Richmond. Richmond. <laughs> it was a lot. Listen, have you all ever landed in an airport and, and it was know, we closed? Just, we just told them we was... Um, no, we, we, we flew from Miami, though. <laughs> yeah. So y'all don't really know where we came from. <sighs> but have y'all ever landed in an airport and it was closed? Hmm. That's what happened to us. I've never landed in an airport. It was closed. And a whole lot of people there. <laughs> Three planes let off and there was one police officer getting you out the airport. <laughs> I've never in my life seen anything like that. But anyway. Um, but anyway. So Maurice ended up leaving. Now that did, that, that was very... That pissed me off. But it comes back to what, like, what we were saying about prioritizing which I think what he was trying to do was a good thing which he should have had shut down his whole entire schedule for that evening because you never know never know, know what's coming up but there was also blame on Kyle but, and them as well because but he know, why didn't y'all communicate that you all were running late granted I know that when you're in the air it's hard to communicate but if you get on the plane's Wi-Fi you can send an email because I do it you can do some a hootie hoo as soon as you land turn your dad on um Turn it off for airplane mode, send a text because it's going to take you a good 35 minutes to get through the airport. So that probably was the amount of time that he needed to know that y'all were on your way or something. We know that editing cuts out a whole lot to make yeah, it more, yeah. more uh, dramatic. Yeah. But Kimmy is set, is left there holding the bag of having to speak for oh, Maurice. Mm -hmm. And for her, I'm telling you, kudos to you, Kimmy, because I would have left. Because for her, it's, it's a delicate situation because her and Kiowa aren't the, on the best terms. Yeah. They're working towards it, but then all of the responsibility to house and to have this these conversations on behalf of Maurice is left on her to have with the ex-wife that ain't really been feeling her for years. Yeah. That was I, a lot. And I was hoping I was hoping that he was going to come back. Me too. Um, but... Yeah, it, it appears that he did not come back from the editing, but yeah, yeah, I was I was real thrown back when he left from that. Yeah, so seeing, like you said, seeing that the the progress that they're making, and yeah, because I feel like Kimmy didn't really have a lot to say, because like she said, she been left out of a lot of stuff. Right. So basically, she kind of had to kind of, uh, I guess, BS her way through it. You know, based on what she. 
what she did know. And what was safe to speak about. Right. Because you don't want to rattle anything yeah. or put <clears throat> any more sauce on it than what is actually intended to be there. It was just a lot. Yeah. And then I like to be fair, too, is like, I know Maurice uh, uh, has a lot of stuff on his plate and and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I can say what he should do. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. He should have been there. Uh, yeah, should have been there. Yeah, he should have been there. But, let's go ahead and let's Hit on Taco Tuesday because this is going to get us into Karen episode. Taco Tuesday. Y'all know that Mel and Tisha are trying to rebuild their relationship or whatever. So Tisha comes over to Mel's house early to ha help her set up for Taco Tuesday with the girls and whatnot. Tisha, Tisha, we know why Wanda is your mama. <laughs> I have never seen someone come in the door and just spill oh, so I mean, just like, much McDonald's sweet tea. Like the sweet right. tea that you can dilute, let it sit in the, in the cup for three days and it's still sweet. That was Tisha. Everything that Destiny shared with her about the grievances that yeah. she had with Mel and Tiffany while they were together. She took that and you know how a kid when they don't want to eat their vegetables. Yeah, she I'm did that. Over at Mel's house. And I'm like, Tisha, Destiny told you this stuff. Not that she had to say, girl, don't say nothing. But, but you it was knew in confidence. that yeah. in confidence, she was yeah. just, she was just she was airing bitten. her grievances right. to you. Saying, right. this is how I felt. Tiffany she didn't have no right to say what she said. And I'm with Destiny on that one. So now, when everybody comes over to the house... You have Mel armed with this information that Destiny is unsettled about the things that had transpired previously in the previous episode. And Destiny is the last person to show up at the Taco <laughs> Tuesday. Because she didn't want to be there because she didn't want to be there. And so she had to end up calling Mel because they're in the backyard at this point. They ain't in the house. Don't nobody hear you ringing the doorbell. So when Destiny comes in, Mel hits her with the immediate, so I heard, I heard because Tisha got said, you got a problem with me, so we can talk about it. And Destiny hit it. See, this is me. No, no, we're not going to talk, talk about, about it, it right here. We're going to do it in private. We're going to talk about it in private. But Mel kept trying to insist that, okay, we need to talk about it right now in front of everybody. She was like, no. So then Destiny and Tiffany ended up having a conversation, kind of like a meeting in the middle of the road. Like, we're not subtle, but if this is what... You feel I did. I apologize, which is not an apology because it is what you did. And if I made you feel any kind of way, I apologize. We've learned a long time, but that's not an apology. Mm -hmm. Although I say it because sometimes I say what I say. And if you feel the way you felt about it, I still felt the way I felt when I said it. <laughs> but they said that's not an apology. They met in the middle and Destiny was like, okay, cool. And that's, and that's like one of our pet peeves is if... I share something with you. Don't don't tell nobody else. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, Tish. I just I just hope that's for the cameras and that's not that's not you. Because <laughs> you will be somebody I would never but, say anything to. But you have been a multiple uh, of bone carrier. Yeah, of like somebody tell you something and you bring it back to the other person quickly and, too. I mean, yeah. it's... Yeah, I, I can't I can't do people like that. Mm -mm. That's like an friend group. Sometimes the people will be thinking that each of us, like both of us, would know the same thing. <clears throat> and they'll be talking about it around us. And I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? They was like, oh, Stanley didn't tell you. I was oh, like, no. let me tell you something. Yeah, it's some stuff. If your yeah. husband tells my husband something. I'm not bringing it back to her. He doesn't tell me. Yeah, it's a whole lot of stuff that I know yeah, in and our friendship relationship. Yeah, that she don't know, cause I'll be like the fellas. Why do we have a relationship if I'm right. just gonna tell her? Yeah, the fe we are, I have a relationship with the fellas. They tell me something in confidence, and the thing about it, you don't have to, like you said, you don't have to always be like, hey, don't tell nobody. Like you, you know it, not to yeah, tell you it. know it, you know it from the conversation. If that's yeah, grown folks, though. something that's sensitive, you know that they don't want that to get out. All right. So, be like, if it's, if it's going to come out, it ain't going to be from me. Mm -mm. So, they'll be talking around me like I know. And I'm like, like what the fuck know. are you talking about? I it's like, you I don't know. no clue. No. And vice versa. Right. A female tell me something. Most of the time, men don't care anyway. Yeah. So, I'm like, what am then I telling you? I, then I'm going to have people tell me some stuff. Be like, you know, you can share that with your wife. But just let that be between y'all. I'm like, okay. Then I'll come back and I'll just and tell her. And sometimes you don't even tell them. Because if yeah. it's not on a kind of like, yeah, like Kim it's, say, 
If it's not on a need to know basis, don't clog me with that. I don't care. Right. But, um, but that's one of the things people are always telling us stuff. Because we're Leos and we're always, so freaking loyal, yeah, they know it's not going anywhere. Yeah, so that's one thing you tell me something, it ain't, it ain't, yeah, it ain't getting out. Mm -mm. No. You, know, you can split my wrist and I'll be like, she ain't done, she didn't do it. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. But anyway, so Mel at Taco Tuesday plays this game. And <laughs> this is when you get to know people a little bit better. This is how we learned our friends a little bit better, too. And a game, <laughs> in the game, they pulled a card and they was talking about some. How often should you give head in your relationship? Yeah. I was actually surprised at Kimmy's answer as well. And she was like, maybe once a, once a, every but couple I, of weeks. But, I was but, like, the, but the way how busy she said that uh, Maurice yeah, is, that's, true. that's why. But men make time to get that. Women make time to receive it too. Now, don't get it twisted. Um. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're not going to talk about it. But, um, <laughs> but did y'all catch when the question came up? Um, have you ever been a side chick in your relationship? And when Kimmy said no, Tisha said, <coughs> mm. that's why y'all have problems in y'all relationship right now. Yeah. That's why y'all have problems in y'all sister circle right now. Because of that little petty stuff that you do on the side. Just get been addressed a hundred thousand times. Yeah. With receipts. Like they, they sent over the, the reports, yep. the divorce decree. Pictures with timestamps. I mean, what else would we want? Like, they ain't had to do that. They ain't had to do all they that. Had to do all that. We believe you, Kimmy. You want no side chick. But there's stuff like that that and, and, makes and, it come and back look, to life. And here's the thing: if she was, they ain't none of our business. That's what. That's you. We don't have a dog in yeah, the fight. So you don't got to explain to me if you was a side chick or not. Yeah. If it works for you and yours, why should why should I care? You know what I mean? I don't. Right. But um. Uh, so Tisha goes up the mountain and she meets Marceau, a.k.a. Scott Manor. And they wanted to check on the progress because their uncle seems to... I don't know why y'all be working with family like that. It be scaring me because if things go wrong, you got to see them at the family reunion, yo. Yeah. But they're saying that the uncle is not moving at us at a fast pace. But the uncle also said because y'all keep changing, changing everything, again, yeah. So that's why I delays. have to delay and change everything around to make things work. It's both of them. Let's just put it on <laughs> both of them. But Tisha brings Marcel this information that while she was over there at Mel's, Mel said that she received a DM from someone saying, "Hey, your friend's husband is over here booed up with somebody at this event." Well, come to find out, it was the same event that they were in at Houston right. where Tisha was all in her feelings and insecure because it was this girl in this red dress that she said was, was eyeballing, eyeballing and flirting with Marceau. Baby, let me tell you something. If you don't have a mate that people don't flirt with, you don't have a mate. <laughs> I'm just trying to say. And I don't mean that to say, oh, you got to catch because people flirt with them. Somebody always wants somebody. Yep. that they see really has something going right so it's almost like a confirmation of mm -hmm. it's how you handle it you, and it's how they handle it is what makes the difference you but you you showed that you have a weakness for this so yeah. now women just gonna play on it now right you have to not trust the other person because you don't know them you have to, to trust, trust your person. spouse so like i've heard conversations where like some uh, women uh, uh, will go out the country with their with their with um, with their friends, and the fellows will be like, "You trust her to go out the country?" Yes. Yeah. Why shouldn't I? Yeah. If 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 I don't have no trust for her outside the country, why the hell am I with her? Yeah, because she's gonna do whatever she do in the country, out, oh, the, country, out the country, down and, the and vice and vice versa. If yeah. I always gotta see everything you doing to prove that you ain't messing around with me, I don't think we ought to be in a relationship. I have to just trust that you doing the right thing. Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, that's... Hell, I need my husband to, <laughs> to referee for but, me. But if I had to run around and check your cell phone, see if you're getting the texts, check your DM and Instagram and all that stuff, no, make sure you ain't doing going... That. That's too stressful. They ain't a relationship. That's freaking... Uh, what, what, and, that's, and that's a, a private investigator. Yeah, ain't lying. Ain't nobody got time for that bullshit. Ain't got no time for that. Well, come to find out, like you said, that whole thing wasn't real at all. And Tisha asked Marcel, was he going to go back to therapy with her? Because she felt like they, that they were on to something good. 
He was like, hell to the dog. Uh-uh, we're not doing that. See, this is one thing. I love us. I love us for real. I know I'm about seven shades darker than I was three weeks ago. I love us for real. But we'll go to the specialist for everything else but this and what's going on around us. Yeah. Why Why we don't check in? Why? 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 Why we wait until things get like on it, what they call it on this deathbed to try to get somebody to work a miracle and to revive these things. Check in. I think it's the, the stigma with it. It is stiff because people like, think something you gotta be talking to something oh, crazy. Is crazy. You crazy. You don't need a therapist when you're crazy. And you don't. But real talk, us is nowadays, we get a kick out of saying, girl, girl, he crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, if he crazy, let's go to therapy where it's cool now. Therapy is cool. But anyway, yeah. So Destiny decided to invite Mel over. <laughs> and I thought they was gonna swing on each other for real, for real. Cause Destiny opened the door with an attitude. She took the watermelon with attitude. I was like, Mel, did you bring her a whole oh, watermelon? Whole watermelon. <laughs> I was like, I know we black and everything. And I said, the only thing you was missing was a buck fried chicken. You should buck fried chicken. Huh? But um, um, Destiny told her, say, you know, I felt a way about how I felt like you were taking up for Tiffany more than you're taking up for me as your best friend. She was like, first of all, why was she at my birthday brunch? And then when she said what she said to me, it seems like you were kind of backing her up in what she was saying. And Mel didn't see it like that. And she was like, no, no, no. But it really did seem like that. Like she wasn't seeing where Tiffany made the error and made all of this just snowball, snowball. It was more like maybe you just misunderstood her heart or her intentions weren't that. Her intentions may not have been that, but she said what she said. Right. So... She put that in motion. This is how she felt. At that point, real talk, that's when you bow out of it and say, I'm sorry, I bought her. But what y'all got going on between y'all no, two, uh -huh. <laughs> I, I'm not in it at this point. But real talk, that's why you don't bring people that you know to new people skit until they have a, a commonality with them. Hmm. You really don't. Right. Because that's when skit just go left for no goddamn reason. So... The boys. Or if you come around people that you don't know, don't come out your mouth with no stupid stuff. So the cousins, they're all advancing. Was it eighth grade or ninth grade? So the families are together and they're having this joint um, party for the cousins, which I thought was really, well, really that cute. That was dope. That was dope. I did. I think it was cute. I, I like it when adults celebrate kids because yes. they, they, don't, they don't happen a lot. We good at telling them what they ain't good at or what they shouldn't be doing, but celebrating their successes... We're not. So we yeah we we yeah, we lacking that something. Yeah, so they got them a little party bus. They had non-alcoholic drinks and mm -hmm. At first, I thought the adults was gonna ride with them. I was like, that's y'all y'all <laughs> get on the party bus. No, too. don't do that. But instead, they went to I want to say maybe black. I don't know. I, I didn't peep it. Um, but they went off and did their own thing while the boys were out on the party bus. And this was the opportunity because I saw Maurice when he looked at Tiffany and her husband Lewis, and I said, Maurice is about to have a real grown uh -huh. conversation, yep. and I'm with you on that. So Maurice pulled them to the side and he 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 spoke. He spoke he a father. Yeah. And he was like, you know, there's a reason why we treat children differently and how we handle their affairs differently is because you don't know how a child is going to react to their business being put out on Front Street. Right. So first of all, you bringing up my son vaping in at an adult party was unacceptable. First right. of all, now I need to figure out where the information came, came from. from. Yeah. Because if it came from the school in which it happened, because the way she put it out there it was almost like maybe they had witnessed it or maybe her husband had witnessed. Where did the information come from? They really didn't say. But anything. she she denied it. She said I can't remember. Yeah. Cause she know, but um, because it probably came from the school. So he said, if there, if it came from the school, there's gonna be a serious problem on their hands. Because right. why are you spreading confidential information? It's almost like the equivalent of HIPAA. Why mm -hmm. are you telling that? You can't tell that. Um, then he told him, say, you know, like you said, my son may not be able to handle people knowing that he was out there vaping. This is why kids kill themselves. Mm -hmm. This is why kids go into depression. Your child may not mind you telling everybody else that yeah. they were vaping, but mine is different. <clears throat> but 
why why was it even a conversation yeah and i like how he has said too about you know us as you know brothers and black kids or uh, black men in particular mm -hmm. when stuff is heard about us like that that's who we become is that every time a monster come up name comes up oh Vape. oh that's that's the dude that was vaping in the bathroom yeah and he done moved on successful doing good for himself and the only thing you can bring up is he was vaping in the bathroom when he was mm -hmm. in school that's what he said because you have to now prove that ain't you that ain't you even though yeah. there's millions of people that vape every single day but for some reason you being a black brother you have to prove that you just not a vapor <laughs> yeah I, yeah yeah that's the world we live in man I, that's and so that's that's what really got him to really you know confront her like yeah you could you could really ruin, ruin him yeah all because you just want to be the person carrying the tea i'm like that's just crazy to me yeah but um i did appreciate the fact that her husband lewis because sometimes husbands will try to back their wives even when they're wrong and he was like she was wrong she was wrong yeah that, and, that's why that's why i say i think he yeah no, I'm talking about Lewis for oh, Tiffany. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and then Kyle had actually stepped into the conversation, and I was like, okay, don't let this let get go out left. of hand. Don't let it because go you left. know when you add more people to it that wasn't originally because you know in the how Mama and boys are, so it goes through a whole. Did whole, you whole say nothing. that my you, son was vaping? But um, it went off cool. The only part that I didn't like was eventually Mel, Mel came over there. Came over, which I'm talking which about. You see that they're in a serious conversation. This is not a time to start interjecting. And she saw that Tiffany was over there crying. She was like, Tiffany, what happened? What's going on? And I was like, let her cry. Because sometimes you got to sit in what you did. Yeah. And what you did could have caused a lot. And All you don't know what it's still. Yeah. I mean, hell, we know he was vaping now. Yeah. The <laughs> whole know? world know he the was vaping. The whole world know he was vaping now. So later on. We saw Tiffany go off with um, Mel, and Mel was kind of consoling her. And I was like, Mel, this is what we're talking about right here. She was like, you know what? I don't think it was the fact that you said what you said. I think it was more the fact that Kimmy didn't know. And because stuff is going on in her household that she doesn't know about is the real issue. That was not the real issue. And Kimmy said it wasn't the issue. Kimmy I said the issue was you putting Mona's business out in the street. Yeah. That's the issue. Now, it was a secondary issue because like Kimmy said I got blindsided like I got hit with yeah. a stone that I didn't see being thrown and I ain't, I couldn't even I couldn't even say anything because I ain't know nothing about it yeah that was part of it but the real issue was you telling kids yeah, kids, kids, kids yep putting their kids about yep I was street. like okay so then we get over there to Wanda listen I know that one of these kids is Wanda's grandbaby <laughs> But can we stop inviting Wanda to events? We've Wanda, been saying that. Wanda gets it started. It is cute for like five minutes. And then after that, it's like, okay, Wanda, just go you're, away. Just you go away. know it. You you're, know you're it. You're doing like, too much. Yeah. So Wanda's having a conversation. <laughs> it was awkward as hell. Because, well, actually, Martel and Mel's interaction after divorce kind of just confuses the hell out of me sometimes. Not because you want them fighting and bickering because we don't want that, but she will like take up for him. Yeah. Like they was picking up, y'all, I'll yeah, team hope. Yeah. And I'm like, I, that's confusing as hell sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Wanda's having this conversation with them and talking about some. So Mel, you, you're not going to give him another chance. Like you, you're not going to give him another shot or try, don't throw him away. And you're got, you can get you another man, but you think you're going to get another man that respects you more than he did with four kids? And I was okay. like, Wanda, what year are we in? It's like, what? Like, do we think, are we really back here with this backwards A teaching that just because you have children with somebody or longevity with somebody, that you got to keep giving them chances over and over and over again. And then if you get divorced um, by them that nobody is going to take on you and what you came to the table with. Are we? That's, yeah. We, 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 Somebody is going to do it. We still there. But I, I, the, the, what throw me back was that every season, she been on Marcel Holland Pause about these 26 women. Women's. Women's. But you want to give Martell a pass with, one. With, with evidence that he cheated. And there's no evidence for Marceau yet. You know, I know we say that there's some stuff 
and stuff online and people said some stuff and maybe he did, he didn't. But there is no ocular proof <laughs> that has been presented to us that he's done that. You make a great point. And maybe you got, maybe y'all might, maybe you might see, but I, 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 I haven't seen none. Yeah. They just been talk, mainly from so, Wanda. <laughs> so the conversations got so crazy and heated because by this time, Marto had went outside with the men and they started getting in his butt about loving someone and paternity tests. And it's flashed that it was going to be next week. So next week we're gonna talk, we're gonna pick up with the men digging into Martell about this paternity test <laughs> and about him loving, I guess, Ariane. And Kimmy is gonna get into Miss Wanda's A mm -hmm. because Miss Wanda say that she still don't have Tisha's back. Whole bunch of mess. Listen, I can't wait. Is it next week? I think it's week. No, week after that. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a yeah. week after next. So we're not gonna see y'all next week for this show. We're gonna see y'all week after next. We'll see y'all. So y'all let us know. What y'all thought about this week's episode? Yes, let's indeed. let's talk. We ain't talked in a minute, y'all. Yeah. So straight for the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Sue up. Sue zone. Holla!